Hi there, it's Tim from Tim's Electric, and I'm joined again this week with uh, with Jim down at Electron Surfer down in Sacramento, California. Uh, I'm still up here in Canada, freezing. And uh, what's it like down in Sacramento for you, Jim? I am also freezing, surprisingly. So we'll be <laughs> freezing together as we look at this video. Yes, indeed. Well, that's exactly where we're going. I was I was watching. I saw a um, watch the April sorry the Apollo Phantom. Uh, keynote presented by uh, uh, Masik, maybe? Is that his name? He's one of the co-founders. And uh, it sounds like this is a, a really interesting new scooter. So I thought we would hop on a call together and uh, and discuss it. It sounds like um, their aim is for a, a, a new all-round scooter. So um, what did you think of the video when you started watching it? Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of goofy because marketing I find interesting too for being somebody that's somebody I'm you know naturally maybe is a little budget oriented when I see this is obviously it's very high quality video they did a very nice job mm -hmm. my my critical mind thinks from the marketing standpoint so I think it's interesting I think it's gonna be fun to kind of see our different takes on on the video yeah yeah I, I mean as a filmmaker for my wife's YouTube channel um I was uh I thought just the the obvious. I thought you know the sound and video production quality was was really really good. Um, so big thumbs up there. I just thought they were it was really really well done. Um, uh, when Masic started talking, they, it seems like they're shifting their focus on this model away from rebranding of the zero sort of uh, lineup that they've uh, they've done, and they're dipping their toes now into manufacturing side of things. I suspect that they've started with a base platform, and they're just sort of making. Uh, adjustments to that base platform and then, you know, bringing that to market. Um, that's my suspicion. Uh, you know, I'm guessing here, but what do you think? Is, is that what sort of you're seeing? Um, you know, what's interesting is I recently got some other companies uh, with a kind of a, a similar new line of scooters coming out. Um, and I think, I, I hope that they are able to get a little more uh, touch on the manufacturing side. A lot of times it depends kind of what's coming from the Chinese manufacturers. Yeah. So I'm really interested to see how they kind of pull together this concept that it seems like they're trying to bring out with the actual product itself. The initial, um, the initial uh, look at the Phantom, I think it's an absolutely beautiful looking scooter. Um, the, uh, they mentioned, uh, at least the, uh, the Masic uh, mentioned the power and design was, were sort of the focus of this particular scooter. Right. And uh, you could see that they put a lot of thought into the design. Um, that looks, sounds like they're going to have two options. They're going to have the 52 volt and the 60 volt option. Um, and uh, what, what did you think of the overall design? It's a, it's good. I mean, I, I see a lot of, like you're saying, you can see some tribute to the Zero 10X Apollo Pro, that that style of scooter in there uh, with some improvements upon it. Um, yeah. I see it's got some, those those photos, those uh, renditions look really awesome. Um, you know, and of course, I, I wish there was one or two real of the actual scooter itself sitting there. Um, hopefully it looks as awesome as those those renditions look, you know because it really pops. It does look good. It looks like a, a really nice looking scooter. They've obviously put a lot of thought into this. Um, I noticed after um, one of the co-founders sort of introduced it, he handed it over to their uh, their CTO. I think it was, um, here it is, it's uh, Eloy, I think, or yeah, I think it was Eloy. And he spoke about the spe specifications of the scooter. Um, he covered off the battery size, which I thought was a bit of a well, yeah, I think he got confused there with the the amp hours and the and the watt hours. Um, he said it was a twelve hundred and sixteen um, amp hours. <laughs> so, right. So at sixty volts, you would probably be able to go about fifteen hundred miles plus, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that was a mistake there, but that's okay. You know, I mean, I mean, goodness me, like uh, there are mistakes in every video I've ever made, so I totally get sure. it. But uh, they may want to just have a little amendment there that it's actually <laughs> twelve hundred sixteen uh, watt hours. Um, so the range that they were suggesting is about forty miles, which puts it into that medium to long range scooter uh, world. So I, I thought from that perspective, um, it's uh, that sounds like a pretty uh, pretty decent. Um, decent range with that battery. Um, 
yeah, 40 miles. But again, of course, you know, that's, you know, we're two different guys. I'm a big guy, you know, I'm 278 pounds, six foot tall. Will it go 40 miles? Eh, I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. The next area that they talked about was the, uh, the suspension. Um, so they've got a, a propri proprietary uh, quad suspension with a seven and a half inch uh, clearance. So that sort of puts it in the between sort of um, cruiser sort of height and off-roading height of a, of a, of a, um, of a, an electric vehicle like this. I mean, I think probably the, also he talked about the safety of the actual scooter with having uh, 160 mil brake discs and um, electric brakes. So what are your thoughts on, on all that suspension and uh, braking? Well, it looks to me like it does have a very much the, I'm looking at the picture on the side here. Um, same sort of swing arm suspension as that Apollo Pro. Um, and I think that that addition of a second shock in the rear should really help. And, and in the front, I think it just gives you potentially more stability. And, and so those scooters had a tendency sometimes if you're really pushing it to bounce a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that hopefully it has some sort of damper within that suspension. It would really help, but that's, that's kind of uncommon to find in anything that's a affordable scooter period to have really a dampened suspension. But yeah. it looks like it's got some capability that, I mean, the Apollo Pro had some capability too. So having, enhancing that looks like a good way to go. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward. I've never tried an Apollo. Like as, a, as you know, I own the Zero Nine and, and I've tried most of the Zero uh, lineup. So I presume it's similar, but this one, the Phantom looks quite different. Um, but um, yeah, but moving on, the uh, the next person that spoke up was Chris. He's, um, he is, um, I believe he's also one of the founders. And he was talking about some things that I thought were, you know, small sort of incremental updates. Um, he was talking about the uh, the custom grip handles. You know, my handles on my zero or nine are okay, but you know, probably need to be upgraded and lockable. Um, he's talking about the angle at the back of the scooter having a decent uh, or the angle being um, unique to their design. That is, they've been looking into ensuring that the uh, the footrest itself was the right angle for people to uh, to sort of take control of their scooter when they take off. And um, but two areas I thought were really interesting when he spoke were, first of all, was the display showing mileage remaining. Now, obviously, some scooters have mileage remaining, but inevitably those are wrong. Um, right. And I'm always, you know, tend to be doing math in my head because I always just leave it on the voltage because then I, at least I know on that scooter, you know, how far I can go. What are your thoughts on the on the display? It looks really slick. I mean, that's one of the that's I think that's with a lot of these scooters in the Zero series and a lot of the Apollo series. The display has been a little bit of a weak point. So having it more of a central location yeah. where you, you can potentially display a lot more information in a way that is a little bit easier to, to get to your brain. You know, it just, it, that is a pretty significant step up, if, if, you know, especially. It's, it's yeah. a lovely looking display. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. But I just thought that they were, you know, switching it over from having to watch my voltmeter all the time to actually miles remaining or kilometers remaining. I thought that was really good. Yeah, that's slick. That was, yeah, those are really good. And these are, I mean, some of these are incremental changes like the, the, the foot rests and the grip handles, but the other big one, for a single stem scooter is, um, and this is a, a failure point that they're talking about. They're actually using multi-layered aluminum in the stem. And I thought that's next level genius. That's fantastic because I mean, I'm thinking of Mantis Pro here, right? Like the Mantis Pro has, am I right? Is that not the right scooter that's had failures in the stem in the past? And uh, now some of the 10, yeah, some of the 10 X's have as well. Is that right? So, I mean, so that's, that's a big deal. And as a big guy, I know that that's a potential weakness of a scooter, right? Like, you know, breaking hard, hitting something. If the stem cracks, this, there's a potential for a significant injury. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be going fast on these things to, to hurt yourself. But uh, so I thought that the multi-layered aluminum, um, stem was was a step in the right direction i'm actually curious because i don't know um what the other stems look like what you're you fix a lot of scooters jim what are your thoughts on that 
You know, I haven't really seen the internals of that style of stem. I've seen on some other stems where they will have that same kind of chamber design, uh, more from a need to be able to run cabling in that other chamber. You know, you have one oh, yeah. that's kind of more structural and one's kind of more of like a cable route. Um, but yeah, that's more from the, that more, looks more like the construction of double wall rims, like bicycles, where you're actually enhancing the stability by that of the design of that other section yeah so i think that's a good you know as you know being a bigger bigger dude like you feel that flex like you're saying and if you can get anything in that structure to help yeah you know, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the things I like about the Emove Cruiser, for example, is that even though the Emove Cruiser is difficult to lift up, the shape of the stem I feel is more is structurally more sound yeah. than having just a simple round um, stem. So, for my my money, it's um, I, I do like to see that, and it's basic physics, right? Mass force. Mm -hmm. And you get some flex, and if it doesn't flex, it's going to break, and that's that was something else. Uh, speaking of breaking, repairability is a word that they used. Um, I thought that was really interesting that they have. Um, so for the flat tire repair, there are inner tubes inside this, um, but and. I know that I actually haven't done a repair myself. I, I take it down to the good folks down here at Ride the Glide when I get a repair. And of course, on my 09, it's split rim, and so is the Apollo Ghost. Um, sorry, Apollo Phantom. But the um, they're also able to replace the uh, inner tube without having to disconnect the motor. And I, that sounds like a, like a, a really good engineering um, decision. I yeah, and I'll see, I see some of this uh, stain effect in some of the Dualtron scooters. Um, and what it is, it's really smart where well, you basically take the power side in coming in the same side as the brake side mm -hmm. so that your other side of the motor is basically free, more freely accessible. Right. So you usually have to take the, the swing arm for the suspension would come off so you can access that. Right. But then, the wheel itself doesn't actually move from the scooter. So it actually can be, it is a lot easier way to change a flat. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, to my mind, it sounded like a, a really smart option. And again, it's just these incremental improvements that we're seeing from manufacturers. Um, they did speak to that, that they've listened to their audience and um, they've listened to their, you know, previous owners of the different Apollo scooters. And uh, for the Phantom this time around, they're taking that and uh, putting what they've learned from everybody, what what the riders actually value the most, right? And if you've got a flat tire, this sounds like a machine that I could actually do myself. I actually don't like taking the battery, disconnecting it and doing that kind of stuff for myself. I know that you're more technically capable. Um, you've got uh, a background of repair. So, you know, this is probably something you're not uncomfortable doing, but even if you're not uncomfortable, I'm guessing it sounds like it's so much easier. That just, what's the big deal, right? You might as well right. do it. Yeah, I do. I do agree. It's a different, definitely easier. The one thing that all electric scooters still suffer from a little bit is you aren't really going to be changing a flat tire beside the trail when you're riding no uh, because you're if you need to take a pocket full of tools uh to do this, this but being able to do it yourself is one of big cost savings yep. and it's it's kind of good at some point to know how your scooter is functioning um, yeah know. yeah and it's a time thing too right like if you know if it's sunday night at midnight i'm kind of on my own until the store opens up and I can drop it off and they can, you know, I mean, I'm very, very lucky, right? I've got, you know, ride the glide just down the road here in Victoria, BC, Canada, and uh, I can wheel it in there and they'll fix it up right away. And they can just pick it up the same day, no problem. But uh, you know, like if you don't have a store and support system like that around you, then I would think this would be a benefit for sure. Oh yeah. And uh, speaking of the benefits, I noticed that they had a warranty that includes free brake pads and inner tubes for two years. And I'm like, that's not a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I, I know they've always been known for having a really great warranty, mm -hmm. um, that two year warranty, but that's, that's pretty cool. I, I, I like that idea. Cause that, a lot of times the, the, uh, tubes on the electric scooters are a little bit of a difficult size to find exactly. 
Mm -hmm. um, and there's some particulars on angle of stem and stem length. So it's, it's actually really nice to know that you're going to get some tubes. Yeah. And I think I remember Vora Motor spoke about this with regards to um, the inner tubes and the tire setups. And just, uh, I know that for example, with the cruiser, for example, I don't believe it has an inner tube. I think it's just a uh, air filled tire and um, they've been able to mitigate the number of flat tires that they were, that their clients and customers and riders were experiencing because of that. I, right. I really hope that we're getting closer and closer, you know, like I've said this before, you know, like motorcycles don't get flat tires, like, like scooters do. Um, I mean, I probably got four flat tires in 2020. I mean, uh, no, sorry, two in 2020, the previous year I got four. And I think that, you know, that's, you know, that's, that takes away from the, you know, from the enjoyment of the scooter for sure. And it also gives me a little bit of anxiety, range anxiety or timing. Like if, if I have an appointment somewhere and I'm like, ah, what if I get a flat tire? So I'm giving myself extra time to ensure I get to, you know, you know, referee soccer. I make sure I give myself an extra few minutes in case I have to push the thing because it's actually happened. It actually happened as I arrived at a, uh, at, a at a game one day. So yeah, for me, it was, uh, it's a big deal. Oh, wow. Yeah. I see that they also partnered with Fluid Ride down in the U.S. So for their U.S. customers, if you order an Apollo Phantom, then um, you can actually order direct through um, a Fluid uh, Free Ride. Um, that seems like it makes a lot of sense because I know they do actually carry the Wide Wheel Pro already. So I guess what they're doing there is, um, you know, you know, you live in the U.S. and I live in Canada. If I order anything in from the U.S. to be shipped up to Canada or vice versa. You've got duties, you've got extra shipping. I mean, I noticed I, I was looking at buying a laptop the other day. If I had the laptop order from Seattle and just drop ship to somewhere in, you know, close to the border, um, it was like $8. And then if it mm -hmm. got sent across the border about another mile and a half, <laughs> The, the price was almost 10 times as much. It was insane. I think it was $78 for shipping because I was on oh, the geez. other side of this, you know, this little, uh, this little line that denotes us or separates us from uh, our American cousins. So, you know, that I get, right. Like the last thing you want also, if you you're doing returns, the last thing you want to do as a, as a supplier of scooters is to take the extra cost of trying to get it across international borders with duties, customs, and brokerage, et cetera. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Um, now, do you have much experience with Fluid Free Ride or their their network or anything like that? I have zero. I, I don't really. The only thing I noticed was Fluid Free Ride. I think was the very first video I ever. They had the wide wheel um, video a few years back, and that was the first video I ever saw of an electric scooter. And I went, "That looks like fun." I need to get right. one of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, if, if I hadn't had a local supplier of electric scooters, I, I could easily have ended up buying one of those. And um, yeah, so so I thought what I'd do next is ask your thoughts on what you like and what you didn't like, and then uh, we'll sort of wrap it up if that makes sense with you, Jim. Yeah, sure. Um, I think what I like the most is seeing some people from a company kind of kind of representing themselves a little bit and talking one about pandemic related stuff, stuff beyond the scooter, and it kind of supports what I've seen with their customer service. Um, side that they are pretty supportive companies. And I think that's a big thing with electric scooters is making sure you're having support. Like the price can be all over and you can order direct and you can do things, but having a company that you can count on to stand behind the scooter is big. Have you actually worked on one of the Apollos already? I had an Apollo Pro. So I did a quick co uh, comparison with all Apollo Pro and 10X. Mm -hmm. um, and they, uh, the person had a rear brake rotor problem. Uh, so actually Apollo gave them the part and reimbursed them my cost to repair it. So wow, that's I sent, awesome. I sent, yeah, I sent him an invoice and he sent it to Apollo and they, they gave him, they paid for it. That's fantastic. Yeah, so Apollo so was, reimbursed the owner of the scooter. Correct. That's, wow, that's amazing. So yeah. they didn't have somebody locally that could actually fix it, but they, uh, they fixed it. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's hats up to them. I mean, that's the sort of support you'd like to see from, uh, from manufacturers for sure. Yeah. Um, as similar to yourself, you know, seeing the multiple people speak 
um, mm -hmm. seeing their different personalities and, and being present, you know, seeing the CTO, seeing a couple of the founders and hearing what they have to say about it. Uh, I think they're in Montreal, which is, you know, just 5,000 kilometers that way. And, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, like, I just got a sense from those individuals about the company. Um, the professionalism of the video, as I said at the beginning, was great. I love the mileage remaining. Uh, I must say, I was trying to figure out, you know, my voltage. And then for me, of course, trying out and reviewing different scooters all the time. Oh, yeah. Then I've got to think, oh, am I on a 72 volt 11X or is it a 60 volt? Which means then it's going to show up at 62 volts when it's full or is it going to be 63 volts? I'm at 59.5. Am I getting close to my range limit? Anxiety kicks in. So, yeah. you know, from that perspective, um, one of the things I really liked was some of the little things. Um, the, uh, the bag clip that doubles as a folding lock. So when you fold the scooter, the clip is used to sort of snap into place. Mm -hmm. But then when it's in its um, folded out uh, and you're riding around town, it's actually kind of a convenient thing to have just because if you don't have a backpack with you, but you buy something, you know, you go do your own Uber Eats uh, or you uh, you hit the grocery store and you can just drop a bag there. I think that's total, totally makes sense. Um, yeah. Love the flat tire repair, um, inner tube access with the split rims and then not having to disconnect the motor. Was there anything else that you thought you liked about the, the scooter overall? Um, yeah, I agree with you for sure on that clip concept. I think what they're trying to do with this video, it seems like they're trying to move from a electric scooter to a electric transportation option, you know, mm. where it's more than a scooter. It's giving you some ab ability to do other things with it, which I think is awesome. I think that's a great thing to do. Yeah, because I think with uh, with proper legislation here in Canada and uh, and around the world, we're going to hopefully see this type of vehicle becoming much more prevalent. Uh, I think it makes an awful lot of sense if I can just hop on the scooter to get my groceries for you know the next day or two. You know, go down, I do a photo shoot, and I can just show up. I actually use my scooter as a sort of a portable clothing rack when I'm doing a photo shoot with models here and down and I'll just arrive pull over and uh, put my backpack with my camera equipment on one side and then they'll usually just hang the uh, the clothing on the other side it balances nice. we just walk around with it and it's it's really really handy um, nice that's cool yeah so let's get into the what didn't you like um I guess for me, like I kind of alluded to when we first started is the marketing side of things where mm -hmm. there weren't, weren't a lot of actual photos and, you know, it's, it's, you know, they're trying to build some hype and some anticipation. Um, you know, that's right there in the title of the video, obviously. Um, and, you know, to that end, I, I don't know, there's just some, it's a gut, the marketing field. Sometimes I, I, I hope it lives to that. That would be my, and a yeah. critical side. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely understand. I mean, until we get our hands on one and actually take it for a boot, and I'm hoping uh, I did reach out to Apollo last year and I'll reach out to put them again this year and uh, see if they've got a demo. Um, I think the Phantom actually makes an awful lot of sense. It ticks a lot of the boxes, you know, from the positive side of things, um, yeah. you know, the range, the battery size, uh, the speed, uh, the comfort. It looks like it's, it's, they're going in the right direction. Um, I think the two small minors that I thought was the, uh, just like yourself, I thought not having video footage of somebody riding it around, that was like, mm -hmm. okay, that seems a bit odd. I think that would have been nice to see, especially, I mean, they're in Montreal, although it's Montreal in the wintertime, so I get why they mm -hmm. couldn't do it. So I'm not sure people who are watching this understand, but Montreal in the winter, minus 30, minus 20, these are not uncommon piles of snow everywhere they may just not be, have been able to uh, to get one of their uh, their units out and uh, and do video footage of it it's uh, i mean i haven't filmed up here and i'm it doesn't even snow here in victoria but it's been too cold and wet for the last almost month to be able to get out there and film so i get why there's no footage if it's mm -hmm. you know just you know um and i uh, saw so this minor minor thing um i know right. there are ads on our video here but there are ads in their ad. <laughs> I know, I thought that too. I was like, wait, why are you advertising? Because then they, they don't know what ads are coming up, but they're getting right. competitors' ads showing up <laughs> on their ad. I was like, right. you probably don't want that to happen. So if they actually watch this, maybe just turn off the advertising on that one video. Maybe you like to have advertising in your videos, but uh, 
Yeah, so, I do upset too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, that was a bit of, a, <laughs> of an overall, uh, yeah, a little bit of an odd one. Um, and of course, you know, maybe just checking when people say the, 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 the size of the battery, amp hours, watt hours, that kind of thing. Probably a good idea to get that fixed for a big company like that. Right. Um, so in conclusion, what are your, what are your thoughts in conclusion? Um, I like that the Apollo Phantom, it looks like they definitely are improving on the Apollo Pro in a lot of ways. Um, I guess I'll be really interested to see if they're able to come within the same price range. You know, if it's a, if it's a real premium increase, uh, hopefully they're able to kind of keep it still affordable, which I think the Apollo Pro is still quite affordable for its feature set. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I really hope to see as this comes together. And that's kind of what I hope Apollo is, is moving to. Did you, uh, did you see pricing in the U S for it yet or no? I, I looked on fluid free rides and I didn't see it on their website actually. Oh, okay. In conclusion for myself, uh, this scooter looks like a, a blend, which is what you'd expect. Like you, 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 you saw, uh, to my mind, f from a price point perspective, it looks like it's sort of in that price zero eight X sort of price point range. Um, but it's got you know the bigger battery, and it's sort of not quite like a you know a little bit nicer than maybe a not quite as nice as perhaps the zero ten X, but you know nicer than a zero ten. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the pneumatic tires, uh, unlike the zero eight X, and I understand why they would do that. You know, it's comfort. I, I totally get that. Um, I must say the price point I think is really competitive. I mean, if you compare what you can get for in Canada and sort of my region here, eighteen hundred bucks. Um, around here is um, 08X, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. E-Move Cruiser is probably very close to that, maybe a, even a little bit less than the E-Move Cruiser. So I think they could do really, really well with this. Um, so my hat's off to them. I, again, thought the video was great. Um, I'm really looking forward to actually trying one out and then uh, putting it through the paces, doing a proper review, unboxing, oh, yeah. and then comparisons. Because I think comparing it to a 08X, a 010X, um, probably a, an E-Move Cruiser, uh, maybe one of the Dualtrons. I'm not sure which one. You know, maybe like a Mini or what, something like that. Yeah, Mini or maybe an Eagle Pro potentially, yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, so was there anything else you wanted to share with us before we wrap it up here? No, I don't I don't think so right now. I mean, it's. I'm looking forward to, I think there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out in the yeah. scooter industry in the, you know, this, I guess, spring, early spring coming up. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really going to be interesting to see what happens with all these manufacturers and Apollo looks like they're kind of, kind of leading it a little bit. They're kind of putting some stuff out earlier than I'm seeing other companies. Yeah. Which again, it's, that's pretty impressive, right? If you're in Canada, yeah. that's a, you know, can you imagine launching in uh, just in January in uh, 2021 after all this COVID stuff? I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. So yeah, well, sure. thanks to everybody for watching. Um, you know, both Jim and I, if you're watching this on my channel, make sure you pop over to Jim's channel. I'll put the link down below. If you're watching in Jim's channel, I'd love it if you come over to, yeah. to check my channel out and subscribe there. I love receiving comments. I just absolutely love it. Uh, I've had some amazing comments, some amazing feedback. I've had emails, people helping me with, uh, you know, giving my thoughts. If you're a manufacturer of scooters and you're, you know, in the United States, then uh, by all means, reach out to uh, to Jim and, uh, you know, get in contact with him via his uh, YouTube page or in contact and uh maybe he'd be happy to review some scooters um same for myself up here in canada if you're uh, if you want a big guy to review one of your scooters you know make sure you write a little email out to me apollo if you're watching this and you yeah, same thing you know, reach out to me i'd be delighted to do that right. i've got a bunch of videos to make um and it looks like i'm going to start being able to review scooters uh come maybe as early as even next week, I've got uh, about four scooters to start doing reviews for. So uh, my awesome. fingers are crossed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, yeah. Please leave comments. And I, I really like starting a conversation about yeah. some of these things. So that's, that's really where everybody kind of learns from shared experiences. And so like, you know, we'll share some stuff with Tim and with you is I think hopefully helpful for everyone. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Give that a thumbs thank up. You. Leave a comment down below. Jim, thanks right. so much for taking the time today. Enjoy right, yourself. Thank you. Stay All safe. Right, you Cheers. Cheers.